A thousand miles away, alone in the North Atlantic, Iceland's experience was about to go from bad to worse. By the time Larky finally stopped erupting in February 1784, it had emitted 8 million tons of fluorine, a highly toxic chemical. The fluorine had mixed with ash and fallen to earth, where it was eaten by cattle and other livestock. The ingested fluorine killed 80% of Iceland's sheep and more than half of all cows and horses. Having survived the volcano, the people of Iceland now began to starve. Inevitably, the people's diet changed. They boiled uh, uh, skin from animals just to get some nutrition out. And even it got to the point that they were taking the books that they had, which were actually handwritten on skin, and they were boiling the pages and, 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 and trying to get some nutrition out of, out of those things. Jorn wrote, those people who did not have enough older and undiseased supplies of food to last them through these times of pestilence also suffered great pain. Their bodies became bloated. The insides of their mouths and their gums swelled and cracked, causing excruciating pain and toothache. Six, sometimes eight, sometimes ten, were buried in a single grave. And God's judgment tragically struck closer to home than Jorn expected. Thunna Hannesdottir, Jorn's wife of 38 years, was a victim of the famine, casting the pastor into a deep depression. I experienced an overpowering malaise and insomnia, which aroused harmful thoughts in me and every kind of temptation. The period from the autumn of 1784 until the spring of 1785 was the most dismal that I ever lived through. When I lost my wonderful wife, everything collapsed around me. Jorn's wife was one of 10,000 people to die in Iceland as a consequence of the Larky eruption. One quarter of the country's population. <laughs> 